Hey, this is Jeff Gump and this is Shop Talk and today I've traveled to New Orleans, Louisiana. That's right. I have come up, to, this is our first interview of Shop Talk on the road and today we are fortunate to spend a little time with one of the key speakers at Imaging USA and SPAC Eric Miller. Eric Miller, how about that? How you doing, Eric? I'm doing fantastic, Jeff. How are you doing this evening? Oh, uh, you know, just coming back from SPAC a couple of days ago. And, uh, you know, at this point now, we've got our conferences out of the way. And now we have to be thinking spring season. Now it's time to make some money. Um, I know, you know, I, I remember a few years back when I would go from the fall season, make all that money. Then I'd get into January and February, and pretty much, you know, the majority of that money is spent. That's correct. And now we're into January. We've got basketball, which pretty much just pays the bills, no profit. And then we can't wait to get to spring season. So are, how are you doing as far as preparing for spring? Well, you know, we do the same thing. Uh, it's like any business. You have to budget your money. Uh, we, we do make a lot of money in the spring between baseball and soccer. You know, those are our biggest leagues. I mean, really, in about three months' time, um, maybe four months, March, April, May, and June, we probably do 50% of our income in that, that time period. So, you know, being frugal like we are, you know, we make sure we put money away for those slow months, you know, December, January, uh, where, where we're not really doing a whole lot. Uh, right now, we're doing basketball. Uh, basketball is not really big for us, but it pays the bills. Uh, you know, allows us to continue paying payroll, you know, these, you know, People still want to get paid, yeah. uh, whether we have income or not. So, you know, the building's got to get paid for, and insurance, and workers comp, and you know all that stuff. Uh, so, so we're we're very fortunate. Let me go back to imaging and back for a second. That was an unreal experience. I mean, it was just fantastic. Um, I, I'm all about sharing because I believe that I get more back than I ever give. Because when I share what we do, I get to hear other people tell me. You know what they do and I'm like oh wow I could do that let me change something uh, I came back from both conferences with a lot of notes uh, just like everybody else did uh, you know I tell people how we do things I invite other photographers to call me um, you'd be surprised probably once every two or three weeks I'll get on the phone for an hour or two with someone that just has an idea who just wants to bounce it off of somebody else uh, you know like I do with you you know I'll call you and say hey I got this idea what do you think of it um, and you'll expand on those things. So, so I think those conferences are very important. Photographers need to go to those conferences uh, to network, to learn, to see what the other manufacturers and the vendors and the labs, see what they have to offer. Um, so you really need to go, if you're not going to conferences like SPAC and Imaging, and there's a couple other ones, uh, SYNC is getting ready to come up, we'll be there. Uh, you, you need to go to those conferences to learn what other photographers are doing. <clears throat> yeah, you know, you're so right because, you know, we get on social media and we see everybody on Facebook and, you know, people that we don't know, you know, coming out of the woodwork, you know, asking questions about, you know, I got my first lead, what do I do? You know, it's yeah. so tough in the on these social media sites when you see this come in. Um, but, you know, just like you said, it's great to be on social media and to be able to have your friends yes. in your community. But... If you don't get out and go to the conferences, uh, especially Sync, um, Sync Sports is going to be this summer. I mean, you know, a couple hundred people. We're doing uh, knockouts uh, or breakouts, um, and we've got photographers from all over the country coming. Um, it's specifically for sports and schools, so I, I agree 100. percent So let me ask you a question. One of the things that was the hardest thing this time of year is staff. I mean, you know, we got enough to get us through basketball, but now it's spring where we have to get three or four times the amount of people. How's that going for you? Yeah, so it takes us about, uh, it takes us almost a month, really, <clears throat> to get ready for spring. Uh, because, you know, obviously we can't keep 30 people on staff full time. Uh, I'm sure just like every other photographer, uh, you know, have a, a core group of people. We have about eight people that work in the office, do our production, handle everything, because we have our own lab. So we're processing and printing everything here and packaging it. Uh, if we didn't have that, we'd only need about two or three people, really, uh, in our in our office. Well, you uh, know, and over the years, I've actually seen photos that you've posted yeah. of your orientation, yes. where you bring them all together. And I That's think correct. one of the things that I like about you is how 
in depth. I mean, you don't just spend one day training them. I mean, you're training them for a couple of weeks. You bring them all together. Tell us a little bit about that. So, um, so what we do is we require, so, so even if I hired you tomorrow, I know how much experience you have. Well, because I have a certain way of doing things, you need to know the way we do things. I can't have five or six photographers out on a photo day all doing different things, all using different cameras, all setting them up all differently. Uh, they all have to white balance the camera exactly the same. We supply all the equipment, so they have to know how to shoot with the cameras that we have. Um, there's a certain way to set it up. You know, we got our white balance targets. They have to know how to do those. Um, so we make sure that a photographer like you, you would have to work as an assistant posing kids first. So you'd be bringing kids in, you'd be checking their names, you would be posing them for the photographer, and you'd keep an eye out on the photographer to make sure that the flash and everything is good. So even someone like you, you would have to do that. And then you would work about two or three jobs at least with one of our seasoned photographers who knows everything. We have a, a, a very good core of photographers that we've used over 15 years. They're still with us since day one. Um, and that's what you want. You want to train those people and you want to pay them so that they'll stick around. Um, so we make sure that we do. We train them, we pay them. We have parties all the time. I mean, the other day I took all my staff, the office staff, we just went over and hit, we just stopped what we were doing and went to hit snowballs. Where are you finding these people? Finding the people? Yeah, good question. <laughs> um, I'm sure everybody's having that exact same problem. So we used Indeed for the last couple of years. Uh, it works pretty good. Tell them what Indeed is. It, Indeed is a site that you post jobs and people go and you know look at it. Basically, it's the classified section of the newspaper that doesn't exist anymore. Are you paying? Is it a paid site so you have to pay? Um, to, to get the reach that you want, you have to pay. Okay. There, you can 25, do it. 25 bucks. So it, it's very minimal. Okay. Yeah, it's very minimal. Um, you know, just like a classified ad was back in the newspaper days. Right. Um, and we're, we're just trying uh, ZipRecruiter right now, too. Um, so we're trying both of those. Well, Indeed works for us. We, we know it does. Uh, because people that are in the film and the video industry and all, there's a certain section of Indeed that they can go to and look for jobs like that. So, we, we, you know, we try to hire, um, you know, college kids, you know, that may be in film or arts or something like that. You know, we got a bunch of colleges, you know, close to us. So we try to hire those people. Uh, and the good thing I like about them is that they're very trainable. So usually, so, so it's important. Uh, when we hire a photographer or an assistant, we make sure they're a nice, friendly person first. Uh, if they have an interest in cameras, <clears throat> I'll train them on how to use the camera properly. Uh, but if they don't have a, a good outlook and they're not friendly and smiling and, um, you know, just kind of an outgoing person, they can have all the technical ability that they have. But if they're not a nice person, I don't want them working for us because we're dealing with little kids, we're dealing with moms, we're dealing with coaches. Uh, these people are sensitive and I get it, you know, we're, we're dealing with their little kids. Now, um, now you mentioned something about equipment. Mm -hmm. Are you supplying equipment or are you photographers? Good question. So we supply everything. We supply the camera, the flash, we supply the whole kit because I want every, you know, we could have 15 photographers out in one day, three or four different locations. Well, all the pictures when they come back here have to look the same. They have to white balance the same. They have to be in the same physical size. So, you know, once we set the camera, we have a job manager. And once she sets up the cameras for the photographers, Really, all they have to do is take it out, set it up on a tripod, turn it on, take a few test shots. Okay, you, said, you just said something that was uh -oh. key, and that is <clears throat> you said the word tripod. You know, yes, I fight tooth and nail to get my employees to use tripods because yeah. they feel like we've been doing this long enough, we don't need a tripod, but I am adamant about a tripod so that it, the camera is set up in the spot, it's got the right focal length, now they can do their paperwork, look up, but when you have to put the camera up and put it down, there's no consistency at all. No. So you do make them use a tripod? They, they don't have a choice. Okay. They don't have a choice. So we have our camera kit, it's mounted to a tripod, we have basically a pad on the back of it that has the roster of all the kids. So the photographer's job is to take the picture, make sure we're good, we got a good smile. They don't have 10 minutes with each kid, they got 20, 30 seconds at the most. Bam, 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 get two or three good shots, look at it, write the picture numbers down, move on to the next kid. Yeah, you know, it was funny. You can't, you can't do that without a tripod. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah, you just but, but I still have those people that have been with me for 10, 15 years yeah. that do not want to use a tripod and I just hate it. Yeah. But the problem, Eric, is that 
I need those people. And when they've been there for 10 or 12 years and they say, I don't want to use a tripod, I fight it, yeah. but I let them go. Well, as long as it, it's so, we have a certain way that the images have to be cropped because I don't want to, you know, Photoshop is a waste of time for me. So if you're bringing the pictures back and you got to Photoshop them, then you cost me money. So yeah. you have to shoot the picture correctly. So in order to do that, you have to have it on a tripod. We also use the viewfinder mask that has the crop lines in the viewfinder. And there's a certain way that they have to, you know, crop the kid to take their picture and you turn it horizontal, you take a team picture, there's crop lines. So, so those are all very important. And those are the things that we teach our photographers how to do. And, and when did, when does the season start for you here? In so uh, very very soon. Right now, it's you know it's I mean uh, we're a day away from February. So we're in basketball. Right finishing so, up so basketball. We're finishing up basketball. Uh, we we have a couple of decent leagues in basketball. I mean it, it pays the bills. Um, you know I'm not taking trips to Hawaii on the money we make during uh, basketball, but uh, you know we we make enough to to survive right now. We well, you know driving in today uh, as I got to the front of the building. I'm, some of us have been following Eric on social media you know, through all the construction of his new building, but this place is absolutely amazing. And, you know, it, it, it's strange because one of the things that you and I have in common is we love for people to come and visit. Absolutely. You know, I used to I always have an open book and I'd say, come to my studio. You know, if you want to go on a photo shoot with me uh, on Saturday morning, come in on Friday when we're, lo you know, loading up all our equipment. And, um, you know, I came to visit you one time and went on, I think, three different shoots with yes. you that weekend. Yes. And so how do you feel about photographers coming to visit? So, so there's a saying down here with one of the Saints players. It's called, what you give will grow. It's a great saying. And I kind of live by that because um, I, and, and any photographer is invited to any of my photo shoots. Well, unless you're one of my competitors, and that's a different right, story. Right. Uh, but no, I mean, we've had quite a few photographers come and visit us for a day, spend the whole day with us, from setup to shooting the pictures, come back here, we show them how we back up all the images, uh, what we do after a shoot to prepare the cameras for the next shoot. Um, and honestly, uh, any photographer that's interested that wants to come and visit and see how we do it, it may not be a perfect way of doing it, but you know, we, we have a very good workflow, uh, a very OCD, things have to be a certain way. Uh, when they take down wires, they have to be square and straight. You know, every, everything has to have a good appearance to it as well as professionalism. So any photographer who wants to come and visit and learn how we do things, come on down. And, and um, so once we get through spring, um, and how, how many weeks does your spring season last? Yeah, so spring we get, uh, so we do baseball, soccer. Those are huge, like I said, for us. It goes from um, about four months, March, April, May, June. We, 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 we have a good slide, you know, as we, you know, we do do stuff in July and August. Some baseball leagues, you know, go, go a little further out. That's some rough months, though. August is rough. <laughs> Down here to do baseball, out in, the, out in the middle of the sun. Yeah. Um, so what we've tried to do, not to get off the subject, but what we've tried to do is we've tried to move as many leagues as we can inside. So that is really being successful for us. Um, it's just a matter of training those leagues and talking them into it and let them see how the other ones happen. But we, we have a very good four months. We have very strong four months. I mean, it'll be, we don't allow any of our staff to take off those four months even though that's right in the middle of festival season here in New Orleans and a lot of my people like going to festivals. Uh, it's like no-go, no. Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm looking around at your office right now and, and um, I look over and I see that map on the wall and you know, one of the things that I, you know, what Eric and I have in common uh, and what I think drew us together as friends is we love marketing, absolutely love marketing. and. Um, you know, we're, we're very fortunate because we have good staff that can help us with our marketing. You know, we give a project to them and say, this is how we want it laid out and we can get it. Um, and when I look at that calendar over there, I remember one of the things in my company that I uh, would give to my uh, salespeople is I would tell them to take, and I, and I give you the same information, at home, go and get a map of your community, the biggest map you can get on the wall, and put that map on the wall, and then go uh, onto your, um, to Google, and put in every soccer league that, that you can find on that map, and take some little stickers, and let's just make those red stickers. Mm -hmm. And everywhere in that city, put a red sticker where that league is, and do that for basketball and football and so forth. And when you look at that map, you're gonna have a hundred dots on that map. 
And when you look at that and you say to yourself, oh, I can only get four or five leagues in the spring, and you see a hundred on that board, that, that is what um, you know, drives me, is to be able to put an X on there and, and know each one of those dots and who the photographer is that's shooting that lead and have a copy of their order form in your file. He was just showing me before we came on the air, he has a, uh, a, a cabinet here, he opened it up, and in that cabinet was every single competitor in school and sports and dance and everything. He has a folder for each competitor in each one of their envelopes because that's the way it's gotta be. Now, um, Eric was saying that um, you've been in business since 06, right? 2006. 2006, so in 12 years, he's, you know, he's built this empire. It's absolutely amazing. So, I wanted Eric to be our first person that we interviewed because he's an open book. You know, you, you can call him, you can email him, you can come down and visit to him, and you're gonna get that, uh, I call it Southern hospitality. Um, that um, that you're gonna get here in New Orleans. Tonight we went to dinner at this great place and we had a roast beef and we had a salad. What was it? What kind Artichoke of Artichoke and lettuce. Artichoke and lettuce. It was absolutely unbelievable. So so I wanna leave you with this. The, the season's about to begin. We're gonna go on the road some more. We're gonna hit some more spots. Uh, next uh, couple of weeks we're gonna be in sync in uh, Destin, Florida. We're gonna interview Lisa Malice and we're gonna and Darty Hines uh, and we're gonna interview it we're gonna talk to Haley. I don't know a lot of you have been following Haley lately. We're gonna interview Haley while we're there. So I'm um, looking forward to to getting this show on the road. We've had a great trade show season so far. Really excited about what's ahead of us and I, I hope you follow us and tell your friends uh, you know about our show. This is Shop Talk and the whole point of this is to be able to share back with you um, the fellow photographers um, you know, what's going on in the industry because once trade shows are over, that's it. We kind of go silent. So I put this together in hopes that we could share back with you throughout the year. And um, I welcome you. Look forward to spending the next 12 months with you. And this is Jeff Gump and this is Shop Talk and I'll see you next time.